right, guys, my name is Chandler Hensley, and I am a student in Western Carolina University. I've been a local here in Cullowhee since, well, I've lived here my whole life. And I'm a Christian. I've been on campus for a long time doing a lot of outreach, working with a lot of different churches, talking to a lot of different people, and something that I've actively been doing in my time here is trying to spread the truth of God's Word. Now, today, it is April 20th, and there is a pretty big controversy. As we can see on this screenshot I've got here, there is a man, well, a few men, and he's holding a sign that says, Attention, BLM, Antifa, sissies, thieves, Muslims, cowards, Satanists, blah, 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 blah. You're going to hell. Hellfire waits. Now, as a Christian, and I'm sure anybody can understand this, no matter what belief system you're in or political group, you can understand that no matter where you are, there are certain extremists that are in your sphere that will go out and it disappoints you because you know that that is not the truth. And you don't want people to come into contact with these guys or whoever it is and then look at you as the same person when you're not. So this is a very common thing that's talked about. I actually just wrote a big paper on the problem with stereotypes across the board. It's not just a white person problem or a Christian problem. It's a problem in every single group you can think of. Now, I want to address this because what people are hearing right now is not the gospel. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is not the life of Jesus Christ. One thing of Christians that we can most agree on, despite a lot of differences, is that the Bible, Scripture, is the Word of God. Now, there's a lot of different interpretations, but there's a lot of fundamental problems with this picture that you're going to see here. And I want you to know that this is not an accurate representation of Jesus. And I'm going to show you that. If we go to Google here, this is the main verse I'm going to be looking at, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. It is by grace that you have been saved. What does saved mean? It means you're, you're going to heaven. Your eternal salvation, your security, yes, your way out of hell. Now, let me explain the gospel to those who may not explain it, or may not understand it, sorry. We as humans broke God's law, the Ten Commandments, okay? We've all committed mistakes, we're not perfect, and because of that, we separated ourselves from God. None of us are more worthy or less worthy. We are all equally in this position of needing God's grace in order to not receive that punishment of hell. The fundamental problem of this picture here is that what it's claiming is what we would call a works-based theology. And what that means is that your entrance into heaven is dependent on what you do or do not do that is good or bad. Now, what's interesting is the difference between Christianity and literally every other religious group is that it is not based on your good works to get into heaven. And it's totally based on the fact that Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, as John the Baptist said, was the one that paid for our sins because we couldn't do it. You see, in the entire Old Testament, there was these sacrifices, this atonement for sin. And that's exactly why Jesus was called the perfect Lamb of God, because he's the only one that could truly wipe away our sin. Now, there's going to be some people that look at this and they're just going to, it's going to reinforce this idea of, well, Christianity is horrible, Jesus is horrible, and, you know, then they're going to go and preach about not having stereotypes. The reality is, and the challenge that I have for anybody watching this is that don't take these people's word for it. Read the Bible yourself, because you wouldn't want somebody to take an extremist on your side 
you wouldn't want them to take their word for it when that's not who you are. And I'm not saying look at me differently, because ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't really matter. What matters, it's Jesus. And these kind of people, this isn't a new thing, right? The Pharisees were the people that, you know, wanted Jesus to be crucified, eventually got him crucified. And they were very legalistic, like we would call this. And just works, works, works. And they were hypocrites, right? Because when we look at this, okay. Let's just examine this. Pot smokers, homo huggers, rock and roll freaks, country music lovers. It's like everything under the sun. These guys have done multiple of these things. We all have. And so if this is the truth, then there's absolutely no hope. These guys aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect. But the beauty of the gospel is that Jesus is perfect and he died for our sins. Now then the question becomes, okay, Chandler. Well, then what's your view on all of these things? Well, there's a few. I'm not going to go over an exhaustive list of every one of these things, but there's things in here that the Bible does not approve of, right? Like when it comes to the sexuality stuff, the Bible teaches that a marriage is between a man and a woman and God, period. However, it also teaches if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. Jesus said that. Because he was emphasizing the fact that we could not live up to the standard. Okay? So while, yes, I may see these things and think, you know, some of these things, yeah, we should repent from as Christians and preach against. It has absolutely nothing to do with somebody's eternal salvation other than the fact if you're a Christian, you're going to be repenting from sin. And again, I'm not claiming every single one of these country music lovers. Like, I don't think Jesus said that country music was a sin, and if he did, well, I missed that. <laughs> like I said, I'm not going to go into all these things. My main point is that this is not who Jesus is. I'm all about repentance and, and calling out sin and calling it what it is. But what people need to know is that this is not the gospel. The gospel is that we were dead in our sins, all of us. Not just me or these guys, like these guys just as much as me and, and anybody else. And Jesus came because he loved us and he didn't have to, but he did to die on the cross so that we, when we would put our faith in him and trust in him, that his righteousness would flow through us and that we would be declared innocent because God put his wrath on his son and Jesus defeated death. After he died on that cross, he was raised from the dead and that proved that he was God. Now, this is a perspective that I would encourage anybody to look at, consider, and Christians need to stand up against this. Now, I'm not calling people to go out there and fight and bicker and all this stuff, but it's important that we teach the truth because a lot of times we think it's just the people that aren't Christians that maybe are, are you know, hurting the gospel, but the reality is a lot of times it's people they claim to be Christians, people that say messages like this, people in the church that hurt people and, and create a false representation of Jesus. So it's important that we rebuke this and that we tread carefully as well because it's a very important time where souls are on the line. And I'm sorry to those who have encountered these things and have seen a false representation of Jesus. And I hope that you will, you will objectively look at Scripture and put aside these kind of people and the times where maybe you've been hurt and the hypocrites that you've seen in church. I've seen them too. I've probably been one at times. But the whole point is Jesus. It's not me. It's not this guy. It's Jesus. So this is my perspective, and, and I hope that this will be shared and that the truth will be honored. And it will prevail, and we know that it will. So, thank you guys.